My favorite example of this of all time is uh, Bill McKibben, who's you know one of what I call our designated experts on this issue. And he wrote this book, The End of Nature, 1989, that is credited as, oh, this is warning us accurately of this crisis, which his claims in that book have not come true at all in terms of the severity of them. And his policies have been we know, would have been horrific had they been passed. And I just remember we, we debated in 2012 and it was some, sometime in 2012, he was being interviewed and he said, like, what they're doing in Germany is un-effing believable. They're getting 50% of our energy, of their energy from solar. And it's like, okay, that's definitely what happened. And he was talking in December and it's like, okay, so first, the first error was he was, he, he what he had done is he had taken like a daily high in June. And then he had taken that as, so it was a daily high of electricity, Mm -hmm. one coming from solar. So one is it's a daily high, right? It's not the average throughout the day. It's just like a peak during the day. And then he's only taking electricity, not energy, even though most of our energy use in most places is not from electricity. It's for things like transportation and also burning fossil fuels directly for very high amounts of heat and sometimes for very clean residential heat uh, via natural gas. This is part of the reason Germany is super dependent on Russia because they use natural gas for so many things, including to accommodate the unreliability of solar wind. And then also it's just funny that he was taking the statistic from June and he just assumed that it was still true in December. Like mm-hmm. even though the, one of the problems with solar and wind is they're very bad seasonally, right? So ger- solar is not anywhere near as good in, in December as it is in, in June. And I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, this is the guy who's telling us what to do about energy, right? Who doesn't know the difference between electricity and energy, who takes daytime highs and equates them with averages and who equates solar in December with solar in, in June. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so it's it's so important to be precise about these things. And the fact that so many of our leading thinkers are not really should solidify the idea that our whole establishment just doesn't value and at minimum doesn't value energy. And there's a lot of reasons to think it's it's hostile to energy. And to make that final connection, I make the point in chapter three, where I can analyze what's going on with our experts and our knowledge system is ultimately, if you think human impact on nature is a bad thing that should be eliminated you hate the benefits of energy. You need to hate the benefits of energy. It's not just you hate, oh, there's pollution or there's CO2 and you think that's problematic. It's the very purpose of energy is to do work on the rest of nature. Like that's what it is. It's the capacity to do work. So the more energy we use, the more we are going to transform nature to suit our purposes. And transform just means impact. So if you're against impact, you're against transformation and you're against energy. And this is why you see with the the most consistent of our designated experts, they'll just say, we're using too much energy. And that mm-hmm. it's just like, they'll say, we have too many people. And it's really just a deep opposition to humanity. 